Hi, this is Carl again, and this is part four of the discussion on lingua genesis language learning methodology. And what I want to do in this part is to talk about my learning of Italian, which I began in November 2008 as my fourth foreign language. But what I want to do as well is just to revisit the time when I first became a self-taught um, linguist. Um, if we just go back briefly to 1993, which was the year when I first started to learn German in secondary school, and uh, I remember that we had a very inspiring teacher, um, a guy who was in his own way rather eccentric, but in a good way, um, one who made minimal use of textbooks, one who had, a, if I recall, a very good German accent, and one who paid a great deal of attention on the spoken forms of the language, on the rules of pronunciation which govern the written words and who got us to interact with one another to develop dialogues, was very encouraging as far as uh, doing homework was concerned, uh, was then very praiseworthy of people who did the homework and then I also remember that at the, the beginning of every lesson what each pupil had to do was to say something to him in German before they enter the classroom as a means of indicating to him uh, and showing him evidence that they had in fact learnt something from the previous lesson or from previous weeks. And uh, so that was German, my first foreign language, which I, as I say I started in 1993. And then in 1996 what happened was, and I think I mentioned this in a previous video, um, the school year was divided into two halves so that half of us did German and the other half did French. And um, if you were good at your first modern foreign language or the teacher thought that you had a capability for your first modern foreign language, what you were able to do is to then choose Spanish. As there were some language teachers at the school who had graduated in two modern foreign languages, uh, one of those being um, at least French. So some of the teachers had graduated and were qualified in teaching German and French, whereas others were qualified in teaching German. Um, sorry, French and Spanish. So what happened in 1996 when we did our GCSEs was that eight people out of the entire school year of about 300 decided that they wanted to do a GCSE in Spanish. So we had a very small group. Every person was enthusiastic. Uh, nobody gave up the course. And because of the low amount of people that were in the class, everybody felt as though they were given a great amount of individual contact time that they were learning a great deal because obviously the teacher didn't have to focus his attention on a high number of people. Uh, we did learn from textbooks but um, he made it very interesting because he spoke very fondly of his own experiences in learning the Spanish language and also about the time which he'd spent in Spain as a student during his year abroad from university. He spoke the language with a very nice accent um, and obviously that rubbed off onto many of the pupils who found the Spanish language to be very sing-songy, um, very uh, pleasant sounding um, and as far as I recall many of us uh, achieved very good grades. Um, uh, so after doing my GCSEs in 1998 I then chose to study German and Spanish at the university well, firstly at uh, the Sixth Form College and then at the university as a degree. Um, and as I mentioned in part one, um, I think a lot of people when they grow up and go through school learning more than one modern foreign language and then later go on to study two languages or at least two languages at university, that they realise that they have the capability but they don't actually understand why they have the ability um, to be so confident with modern foreign languages uh, whereas other people aren't necessarily um, as good or where, where other people declare that they, they don't have the capability to learn modern foreign languages and even doubt that they would have the ability to do so if they were forced to study them. Um, but then in uh, 2005, in the summer of 2005 when I began to learn French um, as I say, it was a case for me of seeing whether I could actually master another modern foreign language, but at the same time what I wanted to do was to um, try a self-teaching approach to see whether that would be as effective as being taught by somebody else 
uh, and at the same time I wanted to refrain as far as possible from using any traditional means of teaching which would be present in mainstream education um, just to see to what extent an, an accelerated form of long with learning could actually occur. And it was very effective because, uh, as I said in, in one of the previous videos, learning French merely from the spoken source was advantageous for me because I studied German and Spanish, both of which are phonetically correct languages, um, and then gone on to French, which isn't a phonetically correct language, uh, which I knew before I started to learn the language, and therefore I tried to refrain as far as possible from writing anything down. But even so, what, what I did was to, after hearing the words, um, from the Michelle Thomas course, which is the um, product, the language learning item which I first used to learn French, uh, I was immediately trying to visualize the spellings uh, of those words, but as I think I mentioned in a previous video as well, that wasn't necessarily detrimental to my um, ability to learn the correct spelling of the words at a later stage. It was merely a case of trying to um, become acquainted with the language, the sounds, the pronunciation and the intonation and just take it from there, be relaxed about the learning process and uh, be confident that I would be able to teach myself um, and even now what I do claim is that uh, each individual is his or, own, uh, his or her own best teacher. Um, as long as we have an open mind about learning modern foreign languages um, and an appreciation that there are many different strategies out there which we can use, then we can go, arguably, uh, a very long way. So now, as I said uh, at the beginning of this video, what I wanted to do was to talk about my learning of Italian. And um, I think having learned Spanish um, previously, having then gone on to learn Italian has put me in very good stead. I've been at an advantage uh, due to the research which I've carried out into the Spanish language as far as um, cognates or similar sounding, similar, similarly spelt words in English and Spanish are concerned, having researched into uh, different patterns which I've been able to establish between English and Spanish, I've then been able to identify similar patterns with the Italian language which is a phonetically correct language um, has similarities with Spanish as far as certain word endings are concerned and there are arguably lots of similarities between Spanish and Italian where the word order um, with it, within different grammatical structures is concerned as well. So I think learning Italian has put me in uh, very good stead but even so I would say that even though it's just over one year since I started to learn the language I do still have quite a long way to go. But even so um, what I do realize uh, is within the um, processes of self-teaching is that each person who actually tries to achieve learning a modern foreign language um, using that particular method has to have a lot of patience, has to try um, as far as possible to, try to create links with other languages if he or she has studied previous languages, uh, but if not, just be relaxed about learning the language. Um, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Uh, but then at the same time, as you're picking up new words, especially from the spoken source, not necessarily to begin with from the written source, because we can't be expected to master the rules of pronunciation of the words within any language from the outset. Uh, and therefore, I think it is an advantage, and many people might not realize this, is that if we start learning a new one foreign language from the spoken source, and then going on to using, let's say, a bilingual dictionary to check the correct spellings of those words, then um, we gain first and foremost an appreciation of the pronunciation and the sounds and the uh, oral development, uh, as it were, of the sounds by bringing words together and creating full sentences, gaining an understanding of the language in terms of how words are brought together and the general syntax of the language. Um, and then we can combine at a later stage, as I say, the um, audio or visual methods with the uh, written methods, um, the graphological me uh, techniques as it were, the, the written forms of the words. We can look at the spellings and then gain an appreciation of the spellings and rules of pronunciation of those words by relating them back to the uh, spoken words which um, we became familiar with at an earlier stage during our 
learning of um, the Italian language or whichever other language. Um, and that's been, been more or less the uh, method which um, I've used. Uh, but as I say, I still need to go um, a little bit further in the learning of the Italian language um, before it becomes even close to the standard at which my German and Spanish is. But as I say, German and Spanish were my first two one foreign languages, and um, I've been learning them both now for um, well over 10 years. But where the German is concerned, um, that was in 1993, so that's been now 16 years, knocking on the 17. Um, so that's all I wanted to say, really. Um, see you in part five.